Global Star Satellite Communications, headquartered in Covington, Louisiana, connects the world. Global Star Satellite voice and data products offer remote communications for lone workers and backup communications during emergencies and disasters. Global Star's products include Wi-Fi hotspots, tracking devices, and fixed and mobile phones. Be bold, be efficient, be heard. Global Star connects the world. Support for WIES is made possible by Mary Lou Christovich in memory of her husband, William Christovich. Thirty years, a stepping out special. with the golden tones of Andre Scalandria. Good evening, I'm Peggy Scott Laborde. Welcome to Steppin' Out. Tonight we are celebrating 30 years of our show, which spotlights the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, Alfred Richard, who covers the local movie and TV production scene for WWL-TV and for us. Welcome, Thank sir. you very Hello. much, Peggy, thank you. Poppy Tucker, host of the WWNO radio <laughs> program, Louisiana Each, and she's so sparkly tonight. Looking thank good. Thank you, Peggy. Bye. <laughs> John Kemp. John Kemp is with us, Louisiana Life Archives, who has been here since the first season. First season. And, and, and still a baby. <laughs> and still a baby. And no glasses. And stepping out, theater critic, of course, we have Mr. Alan Smason, editor of the Crescent City Jewish News. And we have to show you, talk about it really swell. We've got this happy anniversary giant cupcake from Napoleon House, mm. along with this darling little tiny chocolate cake. They both say happy anniversary. We so appreciate that. Thank you. And Chris Montero is such a wonderful chef and all of his great crew. And before we proceed, let's take a look at the first Steppin' Out, which aired initially on WLAE-TV. The first show aired March the 19th, St. Joseph's Day, oh, 1986, oh. and has continued on WYS for over 28 and a half years. Gee. Take a look. Good evening, I'm Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out. Each week we'll try to provide some analysis and commentary and maybe a little humor on the local arts community and the local arts scene. And tonight we have with us Tom Fitzmaurice, publisher of... <laughs> <laughs> and that's the most humor you're going to get. <laughs> right, that's it. And we have Rick Barton, movie critic for Gambit newspaper. Also with us is Amy Wharton, who is Gambit's arch reporter, and Mr. Al Shea, columnist for New Orleans Magazine. And thank you all for being with us. And before we all talk... As we know, Tom Fitzmaurice, even to today, has a daily radio program on WWWL Radio <laughs> and uh, AM. Rick Barton, uh, of course, started the creative writing program at UNO. He's still there. He's also, of course, also an award-winning novelist. Amy Warden is with the Philadelphia Inquirer, and our beloved Al Shea passed away in 2009. And we would like to also acknowledge theater critic over the years. We've had David Cuthbert. We've had food writers John Demers and Lauren Godin and folks who have been with us over the years. We certainly appreciate. But you, John yeah, Kemp, as we said, <laughs> right. was actually with us that first, first season. First season. Right. Yes, indeed. Yeah, but years. anyway, Poppy is with us, and she's going to look back. It's hard to do, but boy, a lot of things have changed. Well, things? things have changed, and I, I just have to start by telling you that I've been almost 10 years in this yeah. seat, and it is such an honor to get to sit next to you every Friday you so night, Peggy. Fun. I mean, you're really a career launcher. I don't. I, I think. I think I am who I am because of you. So kind. thank you, Peggy. You're too kind, but now, thank you. 30 years ago in the restaurants, well, let's see. First of all, I probably couldn't afford to eat in a lot of the restaurants 30 years ago, but let's think back to. 
Ugla stitches. Now, they didn't close mm. until the spring of 2005, so Katrina didn't happen to them, but those Ugla stitches, oh my goodness, and what a change that made on the food landscape. <clears throat> because if you look at the flip side of that coin, there's the Versailles. The Versailles was the big deal right then, and mm -hmm. of course, Warren LaRuth and LaRuths, you know, mm -hmm. incredible. And Christians, you know, think about all of those wonderful places that were there 30 years ago. And as you chat and we chat, we're going to take a stroll down memory lane of some of the photos and hopefully it will really resonate with people too. Huh? Well, when I started, look, there's yeah. LaRuths. Oh, Isn't that yes. exciting? And so then I started doing research in Christians. Oh, oh God, what a beautiful now space. Vessel. Mm -hmm. Now Vessel. Mm -hmm. um, when I started researching what was going on 30 years ago, one of the things that struck me was Susan Spicer left the bistro at the Maison de Ville that year. She had, of course, really made her mark there, and then she opens Bayona four years later. Um, John Besh isn't even in the picture no. because he just doesn't become chef de cuisine at La Provence until 1995. And Imagine the New Orleans food scene without John Besh no. and it, you know? I mean, my God, I think he owns over 16 different restaurants and he's he's got an empire. Ben, let's think about Vietnamese food. I looked this up and it surprised me to learn that when you started the show, their actual, Dong Fong was open already. Wow. They'd been open for five years. Wow. Mm. And of course, nobody New Vietnamese food back. Nobody was paying any attention. Well, today, Dong Fong has become such a big deal that that's the poor boy bread that a lot of people use in their restaurants and even advertise that that bread's from Dong Fong. So imagine, and the Vietnamese explosion that has happened when it comes to that sort of food. We have it uptown, we have it all over town. Mm -hmm. Vietnamese, but 35 years ago, Dong Fong. You know, you mentioned uh, Versailles, though, but Gunter and Evelyn Preuss, and of course, for many years at Broussards, the revitalized of course. And Broussards. But they, they really did set a tone. A they really they elegant set tone. the style. They did set the style. And looking back, imagine this. 30 years ago, there was no Tales of the Cocktail. Tales of the Cocktail is almost half as old mm -hmm. as Stepping Out. They started, it'll be 15 years next year. And I think that Tales of the Cocktail and the work that Ann Tunerman did really helped bring about the craft cocktail explosion. Absolutely. Imagine, what were you drinking 30 years ago? You were probably mm -hmm. drinking wine. Lambrusco. Matus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I shouldn't be admitting that, but yes. Uh, scotch on the rocks, you know? I mean, Not but, me, but craft okay. cocktails now. <laughs> then, think of, the, think of the things that have come along. <laughs> Food trucks. There were no food trucks, that didn't exist. You know, the Roman Taffy candy wagon was still our food truck back then. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you look back over the changes and everything that's happened, can you imagine that people are eating high-end, fine restaurant meals in the Bywater? Yeah. I never even Explosion. knew where the Bywater was 30 years ago. I don't think I ever. downtown. There was downtown. There was downtown. Yeah, there was you know, no downtown. Water there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Barbecue. <laughs> there was, was Mandich, though. I have to admit that. That was one yeah, restaurant that was a redeeming feature of Bywater. Mm -hmm. And the barbecue scene had changed. Oh. I mean, 30 years ago, the idea of barbecue in New Orleans? No, yeah, no. no bar Well, that's only <laughs> happened in the last couple of years, Alfred. That's really a new development. Well, Poppy, thank you so much. We could spend the whole time on that. Believe me, and it's very tempting. But we turn to Mr. Alfred and just talk about some films that have been made having New Orleans ties over the last three decades. New Orleans has been a landmark for movie making over the last 30 years, but the films that I'm picking here, they range. Now, I had talked before thinking about films like Tightrope with Clint Eastwood, but that was 1984. Mm -hmm. And of course, we've had some very good films, and then we've also had films like Dracula 2000, <laughs> Zombie versus Mardi Gras, and of course, Mardi Gras Massacre, which starred mm. Frank Mignard as the coroner. That was a lot of role playing for him. <laughs> anyway, what I went through and decided going over the 30 years of Stepping Out, what would be, I would think, the, my mind, the top 10 films that were made or have a New Orleans connection in some sort. Number one, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Oh. The reason why I picked that one is because not only for the groundbreaking CGI work and Andy Serkis, but how the filmmakers were able to make 
a part of downtown New Orleans mm -hmm. into this post-apocalyptic area. We took up a lot of the area on downtown. And we New wanted to say, though, and I'm so glad you did this, this would be number 10, because you're going to work yes. up from 10. That's right, I'm going <laughs> reverse. I'm going, I'm going okay. reverse, all right. all right. All right, that is number 10. Number okay. nine is a documentary that- And a lot that of money was spent, and Don, let me of just money. say, in terms of yes. contributing to the cultural economy, oh, Don of the Planet of Names, they were here for a very long time. A long time, yeah. and it really cemented the idea of the Hollywood South idea. Yes, yes. The second, or the number 10, number nine, nine. film, <laughs> is going to be when the levee broke, the documentary done by Spike Lee that showed the rest of the country what we were going through in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina and the response to Hurricane Katrina. And it showed how New Orleanians in the area was coming back and would come back the same way that as we are dealing with the flooding going on in other parts of the state. We are a resilient bunch. Number eight. Runaway Jury. Mm, now, Runaway mm -hmm. Jury, again, Hollywood for many years would come into New Orleans and say, hey, let's have a scene where there's a parade going on. We all know from <laughs> Live and Let Die, uh -huh. the beginning of the movie, <laughs> how they started with a jazz funeral. Well, Runaway Jury had an entire setup in which New Orleans is the forefront. You had lots mm -hmm. of great scenes on the streetcar, uptown, downtown, in the Bywater. And yes, even Eric Paulson, my good friend, was able to get into that <laughs> film. Of Although there are a lot of films you could have him on the cutting room floor and cutting there. <laughs> oh. uh, I'm, Eric, I'm sorry, I had to tell the truth. Uh, the next one on my list is Ray. Oh, yes. Taylor so Hackford's good. great film. Of course, J of course, you have here an Oscar winning performance and also Jamie done here Fox. in New Orleans. Jamie okay. Foxx did an incredible job taking on the role of Ray Charles, making it his own, and it used New Orleans, even using the Sanger Theater as part of one of the great scenes where Ray Charles is performing. I really like that one. Uh, the next on my list, The Pelican Brief. Mm -hmm. And that one, a great pairing of talent, Denzel Washington and Julia Roberts working together. And this made a lot of people start thinking about New Orleans, but not necessarily as everything is a Mardi Gras parade mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And I like the chemistry between the yes. two. The next film is a Denzel Washington film as well, but it is not a great film, but it is a landmark film in my mind, and that is Deja Vu. Oh, yes. This was a film that showed <clears throat> the rest of the world. This was the first film right after Hurricane Katrina, in which Hollywood came back and said, you know what, I think New Orleans is still a viable area. The next one, number four, Dallas Buyers Club. Mm -hmm. Jared Leto and, of course, yeah. Mr. All Right, All Right, All Right, <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. Oh. And a lot of that filming, especially done around the area and on Tulane Avenue as well. Number three, The Curious Case oh, of yeah. Benjamin Button with, I guess you say, part-time New Orleanian Brad Pitt. <laughs> and, of course, a lot of the great scenes in New Orleans off of Magazine, Napoleon mm -hmm. Avenue, and, of course, the great work there. Number two, one of my favorite favorites, Beasts of the Southern Wild. Oh, yeah. Crevenzene, Wallace, again, this was the film that said to Hollywood, we can make great Oscar quality films in this area. And the final one that I have is 12 Years a Slave. Mm -hmm. That one won the Oscars, best picture, director as well. This was an example of showing how Hollywood South works at its best in this area Thank for over so 30 much, years. Jeff. And we move on to Mr. Kemp here to talk about the arts, <laughs> the visual arts Well, we in started New 30 years ago. We, we had about a handful of galleries in the French Quarter and one or two in the Warehouse District. But over that period, we've, you know, it's been a proliferation of galleries throughout the Arts District, Magazine Street, Bywater, some of the French Quarter, Central Business District. But the, kind of the seed planted for all of that was well, the Contemporary Arts Center were located down in the Warehouse District at the mm -hmm. time, kind of Skid Row at the time, actually, mm -hmm. in, in the early, in the mid-70s. And then uh, the World's Fair in 1984, which was really the, the economic engine that drove the development of that whole area and all of the galleries that grew up around that, the Lemieux Gallery, uh, uh, Roger, Arthur Roger Gallery, and over 20 galleries in that area now, and over 75 galleries throughout the, throughout the city. Um, and the important thing about that, because they created a market for young artists rising in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, created that marketplace for them. 
And it also created an atmosphere of art where people came to that district to see art. And one of the by, uh, results of that, of course, is the, art, the Ogden Museum of Southern Art, which located right across the street from the Contemporary Art Center, which for the first time focused and gave credit to Southern artists, focused on that. And of course, across Canal Street in the French Quarter, the Historic New Orleans Collection, which started with one or two buildings on Royal Street over the last 30 years, has a, now has seven historic properties, continue to collect, but more importantly, for, for my purposes, um, continue to show historic art, also contemporary art, and to a certain extent, collect art. Now, a large part of the, uh, you, know, you, have to, you have a whole huge arch, uh, art market in the area, a number of artists work in all different uh, genres, but there were two segments for many years were really overlooked, the, the, um, uh, the outside art, the self-taught artists, and, that, and they got the recognition, thanks to the, the New Orleans Museum of Art and Alice Yellen, in that early 1990s show, Passionate Visions, oh, yes. which for the first time focused on, on outside of art and gave, gave due credit there. Uh, and also in African American art. You know, once in a while you'd see that in Noma, not too often, in the galleries occasionally. Some galleries represented uh, African American artists. But in the early 2000s, 2001, 2007, you had two museums that opened one in, in the Treme, the New Orleans Museum of African American Art and Culture. Uh, that, and also on the mid city, so not mid city, called Central City Central area, city. Uh, is the. Uh, George and Leah McKenna Museum of African American Art, which focused on two, two beautiful buildings, like two historic buildings mm -hmm. that focused primarily in African American art. And then came Katrina. With Hurricane Katrina, as you know, the artists were all over the, all over the United States, the galleries closed. But interestingly enough, after the storm, the art galleries, especially in the, in the arts district, were really among the first gallery, first businesses to reopen. And they were climbing across over the rooms and everything else to get to their galleries. And some of the most, you know, and I've done a lot of writing about, South, about New Orleans art over the years. The art that came out of Katrina was, had to be the most passionate and dramatic art some of the best art that ever came out of New Orleans. And uh, you know, uh, artists would, uh, there was one, Phil Sandusky was actually climbing, over, and, and Simon Gunning climbing over the heaps just to, to paint what he saw there. Um, and, and after the storm course, uh, all the publicity New Orleans got uh, after the storm, young artists started coming to New Orleans and to see New Orleans and opening galleries and sections that they could afford to live in, like you mentioned, Bywater, mm -hmm. St. Rock area, now even moving down in, into Araby, opening galleries in that area there. But the one thing about New Orleans, that the art in New Orleans, you see, you've seen the evolution of it over the years. That, you know, we've, we've always had that conservative art, that the one art that many of us loved, you know, the landscape painting, the traditional art of the 19th, early 20th century. But since then, you know, since the 80s, 90s, and, and, and 2000, you're seeing younger artists coming with more socially, politically driven, culturally driven art, like you know, mm -hmm. the ecology. Um, it's, it's got a message in a lot of the art. Yeah. It's wonderful. And St. Claude Avenue, you know, it's just it's so impressive. That's oh, it really is. You know, it? Uh, the New Orleans Art Center and the things they're doing down. Kind of a little mini uh, contemporary the art front. center down in that yeah, area. Yeah, it's yeah. Really the front. And it's doing some great stuff. So I remember awesome. in the late in the. Uh, late 1980s, Pete Hamill, a New York writer writing for the Village Voice, told uh, artists in New York, you know, give up your, 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 your lofts in Soho, move to the warehouse district in New Orleans. <laughs> the rent's cheap, the food's great, the coffee's oh. great, and good galleries. Move down right. there. Now we have more galleries, more working artists than any time in our and history. And Prospect One was such a morale boost. And that grew out of yeah, really Katrina. Was. But there was one okay. thing, I'll, one, one of the last thing I'll, mm -hmm. I'll end on here. That, in 1991, I interviewed uh, uh, Denise Barthume, uh, Lemieux, Lemieux Gallery. Mm -hmm. I was doing an article for International Art Museum, uh, Magazine in New York. And I asked her about New Orleans art. She said, well, yeah, New York art is really more abstract. And yeah, New Orleans art's really got soul. Oh, I love <laughs> it. Yeah. So thank that, you, that, John. That kind of summed it all Perfectly up for me. <laughs> really did. She was right. And thank you. <laughs> you know, New Orleans Magazine's Quiz Queen's Julia Street, her trivia always has provided a weekly question to test our knowledge of local history. We just want to thank the magazine, Medicines Publishing, Renaissance Publishing, that is, and, you know, for their generosity in providing subscriptions to Louisiana Life Magazine, but also a great question. And thanks to our longtime prize donors over the years, and of course, our underwriters, too. Thank you, thank you, an incredible cast and crew. But that's not all, because we're moving over to Alan. Speaking of cast and crew, uh -huh. I, I'm going to take an opportunity to look at the last 30 years and the way that we've changed our habits for watching theater. I, I noted the fact that back 30 years ago, we still had several existing mm -hmm. dinner playhouses. Now, of course, the, the Beverly <laughs> Dinner right. Playhouse had already burned down in the late 70s. 
But there was the Rose Dinner Playhouse, mm -hmm. the Bayou, Minna Capelli's, and finally Rivertown Repertory had started up, you know, within this period as well. Uh, they had provided food, and you would get your food and then go watch the play. In many cases, of course, you'd have the food served and then you'd stay in your seats and, and go. That really went out of fashion. Uh, I guess it was a hard thing to do in terms of have both good plays and have uh, good food. But uh, and, and regardless of that, I mean, it's something that was a, sort of like the drive-in theaters of yore. Uh, they don't exist any longer, and we don't think about that. Now, they do still have, of course, over at BB Stage Door Canteen, the opportunity to have food while, while, you know, basically watching some shows. And I know that Sandy Rhodes Productions are trying to do that in the Gretna Cultural Arts Center. But for the most part, the big pl uh, players in the Playhouse, uh, dinner playhouses are gone. Also, the loss of several of our theaters, and some of those were due indeed to Katrina. Let's talk about Nord Theater. Yes. It has not come back. And again, mm -hmm. many of the people, including you, Peggy, obviously, had started yes, off in Nord memories. Theater. Uh -huh. uh, Ty Tracy, of course, a very important uh, person in, in uh, theater here. The True Brew Theater, which unfortunately suffered uh, catastrophic losses uh, after Katrina. Uh, several, um, unfortunately, some bodies were found there. It's just a really horrific situation. Mm -hmm. uh, Southern Rep lost its lease, if you remember. Uh, Le Chat Noir, which was, of course, a great launching place for, for theater. They had to close after uh, 2011. Actors Theater lost their lease. Uh, Anthony Bean, luckily, has a new place, but they, they've lost their lease uh, uh, due to a, a basically a school taking over their, their place. Uh, the West Wego Theater never has come back for JPAS, Jefferson Performing Arts so Society. And also, of course, on St. Claude, we were mentioning them, the Shadow Box, which had started up, then became the Old Marquet. They've had to move further up St. Claude now to, uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the Araby area, uh, Alfred, because basically that's where the rents are going to be more affordable, et cetera. And of course, Rivertown Repertory had a change of ownership, and uh, they've changed over now to the Rivertown Theaters for the Forming Arts. Now, also, so let's take a look at some of the new venues that we were enjoying now. In the Fahrberg Maroney and in Bywater, there was the Art Club, Michalopoulos, that, that existed for a while. Cafe Istanbul, uh, which is still doing very well. The Theater at St. Claude now, Jim Fitzmorris's and uh, Ryan Fitzmorris's place. Uh, Cajun's Pub occasionally will do some theater now. And of course, uh, that has a bit of history due to Katrina. The New Orleans Art Center, which you mentioned earlier, uh, they're doing, uh, of course, uh, new things there as well. Rivertown Theaters of the Forming Arts uh, with uh, Theater 13. Productions uh, and of course BB Stage Door Canteen. Also in that area, the Fringe Festival and and Faux Real. Uh, also uh, the return of the Sanger and Joy Theaters. And we want to mention also that Southern Rep is going to be having a new theater very soon. So who's in New Orleans still after 30 years? Well, the Clown Prince of Comedy, Ricky Graham, is still here doing great business. Yeah. Of course, much of uh, a much <laughs> beloved figure. And also the First Lady of Theater still reigns as well. And that of course would be uh, Janet Shea. Here she's seen mm -hmm. with Michael Cahill. Uh, the loss of major figures in theater, though were many. And I'm going to start off with our own beloved Al Shea, who of course passed away after serving Aww. 23 years here in, on Stepping Out. Stocker Fonalu, here seen with uh, yeah. Tennessee Williams, Ty Tracy, and Cheryl C. Tadu, who recently passed away. Arthur Tong, the longtime 75-year stage manager at Le Petit. And of course, one of my favorites of all, and of course, Al's too, Cynthia Owen. will always still miss her. And of course, some of the other things new in New Orleans, Mark Cartali Productions has been going uh, full speed ahead with several Broadway people who have been coming in. Seth Rudetsky, usually doing the honors with Patti LuPone, also Sutton Foster, Audra McDonald, a six-time Tony Award winner. When can you see her? Right here in New Orleans. Um, Jane Krakowski, and also uh, going to be going uh, the new uh, Broadway show Smash, uh, Megan Hilty, of course. Uh, uh, all those people, wonderful uh, uh, people coming down and just falling in love with the city. And also coming in at Le Petit, we have the potential for more cabaret. Liz Calloway was here recently. Uh, of course, fantastic performing artist, fantastic voice. And and I hope that one day soon we'll see her sister, Anne Hampton Calloway, who, of course, is a wonderful uh, uh, singer in her own right. They do a great show together called Sibling Revelry. Okay, thank <laughs> you so much. Very good. And now we close tonight with none other than Deacon John's rendition of Memories. Thank you, Deacon John, and thank you all so much. Thanks for watching. Good night. All right. <laughs> chance to do it all again tell me 
Would we? Global Star Satellite Communications, headquartered in Covington, Louisiana, connects the world. Global Star Satellite voice and data products offer remote communications for lone workers and backup communications during emergencies and disasters. Global Star's products include Wi-Fi hotspots, tracking devices, and fixed and mobile phones. Be bold, be efficient, be heard. Global Star connects the world. <laughs> 